Mm -hmm. So Mary Lee, when you're working, we have you pinned, so you want to just kind of say okay, that. Yeah, and yeah. Then I think we're good. Hi, everybody. Right. How are you all doing? You doing good? <laughs> um, I do need water when you can. Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. I hope you're all doing well and having a good good morning. It sure is a beautiful day. It's going to get a little bit warm though, I would say. <laughs> um, I see Anita and, well, I can't really see very well. Danielle, Daniela, hi Daniela, and Kim, and Anita. Let's see, can I just push this, Larry, and see? Her? Double, double click it. Oh, no, that's not a touch screen. Um, oh, 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 okay. Let's see who's here. Oh, her. It's because she's got to turn her video off. What do you want to see? Well, I kind of like to say hi to everybody that's there, if I can. <clears throat> um, I most see. of them have their muted. Oh, we they're muted. One, two, three, four. We have four people. Who are not showing yet? Okay. One is having a problem connecting. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, I'm so glad you guys are all here today. And um, my name's Mary Leah. Here from the Rum River Art Center with Tom and Larry's here, and just welcome you all. Um, we're gonna work through a uh, a little lake scene today, which I thought would be kind of fun. Um, and I'll do it step by step for you and you can follow along. Sometimes I do two of them so you can watch me and then you can um, do it with me as we're, as we're going along the second time. So it's always kind of nice to have a couple paintings going, that's for sure. So if you want to do that, that would be great. <clears throat> so you'll need to have your, some sort of a palette. Here's my palette. I'll hold it up and you can see it a palette and the colors that I'm going to be using today are ultramarine blue <clears throat> and maybe a little cobalt blue if you have that one we'll need some uh, some green and some yellow so if you've got like um, Hansa yellow or Gamboge would be good those yellows are nice maybe a little bit of pink if you have pink or purple um, or a lizard and crimson would work as well. So we're going to get a little bit of color in there as to and also to get our darks. We can mix our primaries together to get our darks. So um, yeah, so we'll get started in a couple minutes. I think we're waiting for some more people to come. Um, what do you think, Tom? Uh, yeah, we have two people that can't seem to get on. Oh, oh Jacques finally connected. Okay. Laura's iPad is not connected. Oh, okay. Well, we'll wait. There's no rush. I'll get myself set up here too. Um, also, a pencil would be good just to kind of pencil in. Hello. A couple, couple things. Oh, John. And um, we don't have your video. Hello. Okay. I can't hear you. Um, you're not connected with video, is that what you wanted? Put your video to start video. Hi Tom, long time no see. Hi Barb, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm hey doing Barb! Good. Hi Sonny. I was actually wondering about you the other day. Oh, well I... I'm doing just fine. Been out in my garden a lot lately. It feels real good. I think the whole thing will be in bloom in another couple of weeks. Oh, cool. I'm looking That's neat. That. Yeah. Yeah. So there's Barb. You guys. I've missed you both. I know. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, we've missed you too. So. Yep. Nice. We've missed everybody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah you're like, here today yeah. with us. So that's yeah. really fun. Mm -hmm. I need to get a pencil. I'll be right back. <laughs> So what have you been up to, Tom? Um, mainly just working and hanging out at home. Okay. And working yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. This whole writing thing kind of 
you know, it almost puts the COVID thing in the back seat. You forget sometimes, you know, that that's why we're all home. That's why we're all watching all the news on the riot is because we're home because of COVID. But, well, yeah. Who, who knew that you can have riots and it would be legal to wear a mask? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's uh, the trucker incident was pretty extraordinary. Oh, wow. They don't talk a lot about it, but there was a guy that probably missed, he was kneeling on the road and he missed the front tire of that truck by maybe an inch. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. So they, I've, you know, they've shown it in the video a couple of times, but only one person has mentioned that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was in the video myself. I think I kind of did. Yeah. A little bit. All right. Anyway. So what do you think, Tom? Okay, you want to start then? Yeah, we okay. can start. So we'll I, talk to you later. Yeah. So again, um, art materials, you're going to need to have some water <laughs> to drink maybe and also for washing your brush. And you'll need to have a round brush if you have one. And if you have a flat, that would be good too, just to help to get some water on your paper. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. I'll do it twice, and then you can either watch and follow along, or um, go ahead and just watch me, and then we'll do it together again. So I hope that makes sense. You need the camera. Move? Yeah, I'm gonna move the camera now. So we're gonna move it so that you're gonna be seeing my hands working, and then you'll also see some of the examples that I have for you. Okay. So here's Tom. We're gonna get that organized. Excuse me. Oops. All right. Perfect. Right here. You can scoop this all over. Thanks, set. Tom. Yep, I think we're good. Okay, so what I'd like to do is show you um, some examples and things that you might just think about or possibly things that might inspire you a little bit. And there, there are lots of different ideas and things to look at. So um, let's see. I want to start with, I want to start with this. This is a, an artist from Michigan actually, and he's uh, very, quite famous there. And, he, but th this is an oil painting, but I, can you guys see this okay? Yeah. Okay, I, I just, I love can his I work. Can you for a moment? Pardon me? Can I interrupt you for a moment? Of course. Um, when the camera was focusing, it was focusing only on your white background, and it can't focus on just the white. So could we refocus now that you've got some color on that white? Because to me, it looks a little bit muted. Okay. Um, that's probably going to be that way because this uh, program that Zoom uses is low res. It's not an HD picture. And the camera is autofocus, so it does search. And the internet connection also varies the focus. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So that was one of the no, biggest no, no problem. With Zoom is that they're not using high depth technology. Okay. Well, I apologize for that. Um, oh, that's okay. Hopefully, you can see. I'm I'm holding it up a little more. It's really <laughs> what I wanted you to just kind of. I wanted to show you some different lake scenes, and this is lovely with the with the dock and the canoe and the little rowboat. I think that is, and just very impressionistic. I love the clouds and those clouds are kind of like what we have today right now that as I was coming over and looking out I could see those soft billowy clouds and then in the distance across the lake this is actually Walloon Lake if any of you know Michigan a little bit um, across the lake you can see the you know the land there and we're going to be doing something in a similar manner with the with the uh, seen across the lake. 
Okay. Um, this is another one that I thought was really fun to show. And this is called Surf, Storm Surf at Cape Disappointment. And I think it's by Eric Weingart. But anyway, I think this is super cool and interesting and really super expressive when you think of a, a lake. <laughs> I would think this is a lake. What do you think, Tom? I don't know. Okay. Cape Disappointment. It might oh, that's, be. that's Washington. That's Washington. So it's the ocean. Sorry. Um, I, I really just saw this picture in one of my magazines and I'm like, that is so fun to show. But anyway, a big contrast from the previous picture. <clears throat> so this is one that I did that is, and it's very delicate. Um, this was Lake Michigan and the clouds have some definition to them. Um, I just thought it'd be fun to show you. It's very nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. Really, mostly the colors here are blue and some, a uh, little bit of green into the blue there to yeah. depict that day. It's yeah. kind of fun. Very minimalist. Um, yeah. So there was one more, I'm trying to find it. Okay, so this is one that I found, um, by uh, J. M. W. Turner, and he's just a master of, you know, depicting these very misty scenes. And this is watercolor. So this was done. Hmm, let's see. This was done in 1841. So I hope you can see these. And I just thought it was sort of fun to show you some different examples of lake and ocean seas. Um, this was kind of cute too because of course when we think of Minnesota we think of the loons. So maybe yeah. you'll you'll want to add a little loon or two to your uh, your scene but I thought this was sort of fun to show as well. This this is Daniela. I have a question. Is this a good size for it? Your paper? Mm-hmm. How, how big is it? It's about yeah, let me see. It's in a sketchbook. Oh, honey, I, I think that's just fine. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Really, so any 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 size is fine that you choose to work on. I've, I've shown you mine was probably five by seven, I would say. So, yeah, you can, you can work small or you can work a little bit larger if you want to. Here's a photograph that I found, too, of some beautiful clouds in the sky. I know there's a little reflection, but okay. All right, so what I would say is we're gonna start with our pencil and I've got my watercolor paper here. It's not very big. It's, what size would you say this is, Tom? I can't. Nine by 12. Nine oh, by 12-ish, okay. yep. And so this is one that I, I did. And I thought this was kind of a good example to show in the distance where we see the, the hills and um, you know the, the land across the, the little lake. So that's something you might want to do is to add some trees, but we could do that at the very end. And that's, that's up to you. <clears throat> this is another one that I, I did that is um, again, very similar, but it's showing it's kind of a soft morning, I would say, soft. It looks morning. like a jungle in the back with all those trees. You think it looks like a jungle? Oh, it could be a jungle. That'd be cool, you could make a jungle, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have some things in the distance and we're gonna have some things a little bit closer. And I don't know if you can see, but I added a couple little birds flying. I don't know if you can tell that, but anyway. So we have a couple different options today in the way that it's we choose. Point, it's point of view. That's right. We, we can think about our point of view. Awesome. Okay, so Tom, do you think we should have people mute or um, for a little while? Um, yeah. Or if, well. There's, there's too many people, so everyone should mute until you tell them to unmute. Yeah, well, that'd be good.
All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil and I, I made, here's my paper, and I want to avoid the center line here. I don't want to divide my paper in half. Okay, so I want to think about my horizon line, which many of you know that the horizon line is where the land and the sky meet. So my water and my land are going to be not halfway, that's going to be either below or above the halfway mark of my paper. So I made a little line here and my line is right from here to here. So you can go ahead and do that if that helps you to figure out where you want to have that uh, the horizon line. Okay, so that would be the first thing to do. Once you're ready, we're going to be having our water and our, our palette close by and to have your pigments ready. Now, some of you may be working from a little tin. I don't know where that one is, but there's a little tin that you can use that has the colors right in it. And so that's always nice to use, but have it close by so that you can um, really have access to your paints right away. All right, so they're all there. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here, and I'm gonna be looking at my photo in my, my painting that I made actually, I'm looking at this. And I'm, I'm also looking at this one too. So I'm kind of looking at both of them. I don't know how I can put it so you guys can see that. Where should I put it? Perfect. Here's a here's just a little palette to show you that has the, the paints in it. So these are great to use. And these are fun to use as well if you're out um, in your yard or you're out traveling around and you can have your, your pigments right close by for you in an easy way. Okay. So I have a I have a circle pigment from a kit. Is that fine? Of course, that'd be great. A circle pigment, so a little palette maybe with um with the pick the paints on it. That's great. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing first again is I'm going to be using my flat. I'm using a flat brush, but it doesn't matter if you have another brush. That will be just fine. And I'm going to get this wet up here where the sky's going to go. Okay, so I'm dipping my brush into the water and I'm going to get the sky nice and damp. Okay, nice and damp. And on if you know, most of you know that we want to let the water that I'm putting onto this paper, I want to let it soak in to the fibers of the paper so that when I put the paint on, it's going to be nice and soft, nice and soft. And I want the color, I'm getting some Kleenex <laughs> because that will help me when I'm painting to have some tissue close by. I want this to be able to move. I want the paint to move on my paper. I'm thinking about the sky right now and I'm thinking about the way that I want to apply my paint up here into this upper area. Okay, I'm just thinking about it. And I'm gonna switch to my round brush, okay? And first of all, I'm taking some cobalt blue, which is a lovely blue. And I also have some ultramarine blue. So either one will work, you don't have to mix them unless you want to. You can use one or the other. So what I've done is I've mixed my blue here so that it's all ready for me when I get ready to do the sky. So what I'm gonna be doing is just using this blue to sort of, in a circular motion, sort of dance across the top of the paper. I'm not gonna go back and forth like this right now because I'm thinking about clouds. So here we go. You can see how soft this is and 
if it's not soft, you can always add a little more water as you do this. So um, I'm just applying this paint and getting it on here in a soft way to think about the movement of the clouds in the sky. In some areas, I might end up leaving a little bit white. That's okay, because those, those are the clouds. And you can just bring your brush across the paper and think about the way that you want to get the clouds painted and the sky painted. If you have a bigger brush, that might help too. So if you're working with a bigger piece of paper, then I would say use a bigger brush, right? Because you can get it done more quickly and you're not gonna have your paper drying on you as much, all right? So I should probably get a bigger brush, huh? <laughs> So you can go ahead, if you're following along and painting at the same time, get your sky done. Get your sky done. You wanna get a little bit darker around some of the clouds while it's wet, you can do that. So right now we have a very, I would say this is a very soft sky. Does anybody have a question about the sky right now? No? Nope. I like to paint all the way to the edges of my paper. Okay, that's important to do that because when you're putting a frame or I should say a mat on your piece, it's gonna come in about a quarter of an inch all the way around. So you want to have your paint going all the way across the watercolor paper, okay? And it's okay to leave some white. You can see that I've left some white here, which is nice. Now, if you feel like you got a little bit too much paint going on, <clears throat> excuse me, you can take your brush and clean it off and dry it and pull a little bit of color out in the areas where you want to do that. This will work because this paper is still nice and wet. Nice and wet. It's damp. So my colors are moving still on this, on this paper. Okay, so there's my sky. Um, I, I would like to let this dry just a bit before I go on and start adding more things to this. So what do you think? It might be a good idea to make another sky and you guys can maybe make two paintings while this dries. If you have a hair dryer, that'll work too. Um, yeah. So give it a chance to dry. I do have a question. Um, some teachers have you tape down the paper? Correct. You paint all the way to the edge. Um, can you tell me the pros and cons of those things? Of course. So um, let me go. I'll get you, show you one that's taped down. Okay, I'll be right back. Stay right there. <laughs> Stay right there. That was funny. <laughs> oh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. So here's an example of, of um, watercolor paper that's taped down. And, and so that's a really good question. When you do that, you're going to the edges of where the tape is. And so when I pull the tape off, I'll have a nice clean edge around my watercolor paper, which is perfectly fine. Okay. Now, the reason that I might do that is because I might be outside painting and I might be taping it down to a piece of foam core 
Encore is really lightweight, right, Tom? And yes. then that way when you're painting outside or you can put it on your lap or whatever, and you can also move the paper, excuse me, move the um, piece of foam core yep. with the paper attached if you need to be able to um, make some of the paint move for you and use gravity. So um, sometimes I do tape my paper down. It just depends, especially if I'm going outside to paint, that would be when I would do that. Okay, so um, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, good. Both, both ways are just fine. All right, so um, this is still pretty wet. So I'm wondering if I should just do another sky. And what do you think, Tom? Sure, another sample would be okay. okay. We'll do another sky. We'll let that one dry just a bit. And that way you'll have two, two paintings going on, huh? Okay, so here's another piece of paper. I'm going to do the same thing, thinking about where my horizon line is going to be. And uh, just drawing a little line here. Now, you don't have to draw a line. It's not a big deal, but I just like to kind of know where that's going to be. So here we go again. I'm wetting my paper so you guys can follow along and do this with me. I'm wetting the, the upper part of my paper with clean water. If your water gets dirty, you need to go and get clean water. <laughs> okay, so I leave this for a minute to let the, the water that I put on here seep or be absorbed into the paper so that it's not sitting like a puddle on top. Okay, so I'm going to do this again with my, I'm going to use my round brush mm -hmm. to work with. I like using a round brush for, for a sky like this. Um, other times, maybe doing a sunset like we did a few weeks ago, we might want to have a flat brush for that. But mm -hmm. because I'm thinking about clouds today, I'm using my round. And I did get a little bit bigger brush. Okay, so I've loaded it up. It's a nice thirsty brush. So I've loaded it up. That means thirsty means that it really holds a lot of pigment. And I'm going to do the same idea here with thinking about where the clouds are. And I'm starting up in the right hand corner. Now you could start in the left hand corner. That's totally fine. Um, and I'm bringing this color across the paper. Little, little vibration or reverberation, Tom. Yeah, I don't think it's coming from us. A little darker. A little darker than I want. You can move it. Just pick your paper up and move it a little bit, tilt it, and that will help the colors to mingle together right on the paper. And again, if you want to remove some pigment, then rinse your brush off and pull some color out. If you want to introduce a little bit of pink, you could do that in the sky. 
just for fun, you might want to put a little bit of color, extra color of a little pink in there or alizarin just to add a little color. A little bit different. For some, of, for some of you who are new today, um, keep in mind the Kleenex that you use to clean, your, clean off your brush or make clouds with, make sure that they don't have aloe in them or oh. any of those other oils and additives that they're putting in the Kleenex. Oh, that's true. Forgot about that. Thanks, Tom. So I just put a little tiny bit of alizarin, or this could be rose matter. It's probably rose matter. A little bit of that in here just to give it a little, a little um, difference, different than my other sky. Hmm? Thank you. So I'm working on, um, this is Arches watercolor paper. It's 140 pound and it's called cold press. So the, this kind of paper has some tooth to it. it that just means that, it, um, that it's got texture. So you can see some of the textures kind of shining through here. So that's, that's okay, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that, okay? So this sky, I'm, I'm happy with it. I like the movement of the clouds so that they're kind of, you know, moving along in the sky a little bit. And so I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, I'm gonna put it aside. And now I have this one that is still a tad wet, but I think we'll be okay. Um, and I'm gonna think right now about the, the distant um, land that's across the lake. So the, the land across the lake that I can see. So we want to keep, remember that if there are trees or, or hills or something like that, they're going to be lighter the farther away they are from us. They're going to be a little bit lighter. And generally, the things that are closer to us will be darker. So you want to think in terms of um, values, so lights and darks. And these, these um, whether they're mountains or trees, they're not going to be very detailed. So they're going to be, um, I would say, just kind of soft, right? Because they're far away. So what I'm going to do now, this is my area here where the sky is. I'm going to start by um, getting this wet. My horizon line is right here. And it really doesn't matter a whole lot where you, if you go up above the horizon line, that's totally cool. So I'm going to do that. And I'm getting this damp up here, right along here. Because I, I, I want this to be soft when I paint it. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of green, but I want to mix my green with a bit of yellow because I want this to be very very light and spring like because right now we see all this these many different uh, greens okay so I'll show you what I mixed up I'm gonna put it right here okay so I've mixed this very light green so this is going to be my lightest light and it's going to go in the distance. It's going to make up some distant area back here. Okay, so here we go. I'm thinking about letting this bleed or move, I should say, up into my sky, which is totally fine. Very light, and we also very soft. So these can be trees, they could be hills, you know, whatever I decide that I want them to be. And I will be adding details later. This is just to get some color in the distance. OK, 
Okay. Do you go all the Do you go all the way on the horizon line, or do you leave some space? You could do it either way. That would be fine. So um, this this one that I made, I came across to here, and then I did another one here. So that would be fine. This one, I for some reason I just started going all the way across. So you could do it either way. Okay. So I'm using my brush to kind of go up and down a little bit to create some uh, trees or perhaps it's a, I would say this is a tree line back here. And because it's it's wet, my my color, my pigment is moving upward, which is what I want it to do right now. I don't want it to go into where my water is going to be at this moment. Okay, so I'm increasing my uh, my value. In other words, I'm getting a little bit darker as I go along. You can see that in the distance, there's some very, very pale, pale hills. I got into a little bit of blue, just because I think that might be pretty to add a little blue here in with my green. These could just be some trees or some pine trees, whatever you want them to be. So I'm working with my brush by um, moving the pigment from this area and pushing it up a little bit and creating the look that I want. Okay. Now if I want to, like I did on this other painting, I can add another area here of, of a little more, maybe it's a little island or a little land area kind of poking out here. So I can do that. It's getting darker at the bottom of it. You see, it's getting a little darker. So I started with a light value and then I added some darks. So you can change your green by adding yellow to it, of course, and you can also put blue with it, and that's really pretty. If you wanna get it a bit darker, which I'm gonna do in a minute, um, you can add um, a color we call burnt sienna. That's another really nice color that we can add to our blues and greens, and really it works with pretty much any color, and it, it grays it up, it's really nice color. If you don't have that color, then we can put a little bit of red or alizarin crimson in with my green and my blue. Mix those guys all together and you can get a nice dark that way. Nice gray. I don't wanna use black. I'm just mixing the colors that I'm already using to get my darker value, okay? So over here, I'm gonna go in with a little more dark with that color that I mixed. And I'm applying it in a, um, I would say intermittently. That means it's just sort of a little here, a little here, maybe here, and I'm bringing it along and changing the, the space between the darks as well as the, how high the dark goes up into it. Yep. Or 
adjusting. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? I can hold it there for a minute. Okay, so you can see where I popped in a little bit of that nice dark gray that I made in different spots. Thanks, Tom. A little bit of that over here, not too much. But this is still all nice and wet. So because it's wet, damp, I should say, it's moving into the existing wash where I want the darks to go. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to let that dry a little bit before you go to the next part. Give it a little time to dry before we do the water. Um, if I do the water now, then I might end up with a color that I'm not very happy with. Okay, so we generally we work from um, we work from dark to light, but we also work from, thanks Tom, from general to specific. In other words, my details that, are gonna, that I'm going to be adding to this will be done later. They'll be done later as I'm going along. Okay. This is still wet, so I'm going to go back in now. I've got some nice dark green mixed up. If you have a green that needs to be more like a, a pine tree green, Mixed it right here. Just add a little bit of red to your green and you'll get more of a pine fish green. Okay? So really you can do a lot with just a few colors. You can get a lot of different different colors by mixing them together. And here I'm going in now in different areas to get some um, deeper and darker greens that are popping in here. Closer to the shoreline in the distance, I should say. Okay. Does anybody have a question? Right now? How's everybody doing with this part? Don't forget to either um, unmute or yeah, give us a thumbs up. Yeah, good. Thanks, Tom. So right now you would want to unmute and ask questions that you might have. You have 31 people. When you're putting that darker color on the on the bottom there, are you still going in the upper strokes? Um, I would say yes. I'm, I'm sort of, I guess I would use, Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I would use the word um, maybe dabbing um, and, and moving upward. That would be how I'm, how I'm, how I'm working. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, another thing you can do, this is a little tricky, but I'm just going to show you because this is still wet. If I want to pull some of my um, whites out. I can take my brush and come into a few areas to pull the color out. It's a little hard to do that, but you can give it a go if you want to. Um, maybe these are some birches way in the distance. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. But you got to work it a little bit. In other words, I'm moving up and pulling the pigment out and I have to remember to rinse my brush because of course the colors are right on my brush. 
So if I want to get rid of the color, I have to keep kind of doing that. Okay, so that's kind of a fun thing to do if you want to try that. If you don't like it, you can always go back and put some more color there where you did those, did that. Whoops. Oh, well, that looks kind of nice back there. Okay, so let's go on now. I'm going to go in here and put a little lighter yellow because I wasn't happy with that. But just remember that when your paper is, is nice and wet like this, damp and, and the, you're going to end up with nice soft edges and you can keep um, adding, adding pigment to your situation here. Once it starts to dry, there's a fine line that once it's starting to dry, you want to let it rest, okay? And because you'll end up pulling the paint right off the paper, pretty much. So, all right. Um, I think I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to go back over here. I think we have enough time. I can do this one again, right? And then I will show you how to do the trees if you want to add some trees and of course we still have to do the water, right? So, okay, so here's my second one that I did, or maybe this was the first one, I don't remember. Um, remember what I'm doing here is I'm getting this damp and I can go up into the sky. No worries about that because it's dry. And I know that the green that I'm putting here is gonna be just fine mixed in with the blue of the sky. I know it would be fine. I could have yellow here as well, and then that we know that would work. I wouldn't end up getting mud happening. So I'm getting this damp. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did a little bit ago with a little bit of yellow. Maybe I should get going there. Yeah, I'm so fortunate that Tom is here getting me water because you know, you want to have clean water when, <clears throat> when you're painting, painting. So I'm going in with yellow here, changing it up a little bit this time. A pretty little yellow green. I'm going to cross here with that. Just wanted to show you that because it's, it's um, the layer beneath it is blue. So if I put yellow or yellowish green over top of it, it's gonna be just fine, right? And it's also gonna pick up the layer beneath it, which is the blue, and it's okay. Go all the way across again. Okay. A lot of artists, <clears throat> excuse me, like to have a couple paintings going at the same time because, well, especially with watercolor, we're waiting so much for things to dry <clears throat> that we can have a couple paintings going. And they're going to be different and they should be different. That's okay. You know, and, and there are a lot of artists that paint the same thing over and over again because you learn something new each time you do it. I think it was Van Gogh, right, Tom? He painted those sunflowers. Yes. I don't know how many times. I think Larry knows how many times did he paint those sunflowers, but a lot. And it's awesome. So, and of course, you know, when you're looking at a, a scene, a lake, perhaps you have a cabin or you go to a lake that you go fishing or whatever, and you just know it really well. You know the scenery re really well, which is awesome. But also think about different times of day and how the light is going to shift. It's going to be different. So it looks, I got pretty bright right there, didn't I? Um, you can change, change it up depending on what time of day it is. 
could be the same scene that you paint. Just kind of a fun thing to do. So this one's a little different than my first one. Just want to show you I changed the colors. They're a little brighter. Not quite so gray. They're a little brighter. Get a nice darker blue green. So I just took the green that I had and I mixed it in with a bit of my ultramarine blue. A lot of art, a lot of people when they paint like to, I just thought of this, but a lot of people like to have a little um, scrap of paper close by because then you can test the colors that you're using and see if you like them before you put them down onto your paper. So that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. This is a little different. It's a little more linear. My, my marks are more horizontal, I would say. How are we on time? Okay. So we're gonna do this, the water because we're gonna run out of time. All right, I could keep working on that, but I think I'll just let it be, all right? So I'm gonna go back to my first one and I'm gonna add the water. Rinse off my brush before I get started on that. And I'm thinking about the fact that the water where it's going to be more shallow is going to be lighter and it's the color that I put down and then the deeper the water, I better not use green water, right? I better switch and get some clean water. <laughs> so here we go. So um, I'm, <laughs> no, I got clean water. You got me some. So we're good. Yep, I'm good. So I'm taking my brush again into this area that the water will be. You can leave some uh, areas white. In other words, don't put any water there if you want to have some white paper white on your watercolor paper. Paper white just means that the white of the paper shows through and we want to leave the white of the paper because it gives it a nice sparkle and, and a nice freshness, I would say. So I'm going to be going into my blue and gotta find a clean spot on my palette. I mixed up so much color here. Got a clean spot. I don't wanna make uh, the water green at this point today. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I'm taking my brush and I'm going to move back and forth like this, okay, with my brush to make the water. Color. Pardon me? What color? Well, I've got um, ultramarine blue and, you know, you use whatever blue you have or whatever blue you want to use. You could make a purple, a purple lake, that would be okay. Whatever you like, you can use that. All right, so I'm gonna be moving across here, thinking about my value being darker, well, darker here, and I'm bringing it across the paper. Mm -hmm. Now you can see I made a brush stroke here. I can take my brush, get some clean water on it, and go below right here. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take that and bring it down.
this is this is really called what we um, call this a graded wash in watercolor. So I'm leaving some whites. I don't know if you can see this here, and I, I oops, right here. That's white right here. And so you can do that by bringing your brush across and sort of skimming it along the paper to leave some nice reflections in the water. Now if you get a hard edge, which I did because I was talking too much, <laughs> sorry, um, I can just bring this right across and it should be just fine. Because I dampened it first. It gives me a lot of um, a lot of extra time when it's wet, wet like that to um, add the things I want to add and the color that I want to add. So I'm going back in with a little more blue, and I'm going to pull it across again into this wet wash here. So I'm going to pull it right like that. Okay, so my hand is really, I'm not so much using my, my fingers, finger muscles, <laughs> but I'm using my arm. I'm standing up, by the way, when I'm painting here, so I can let my arm just sweep right across here and, and get the, the way that I, and get this the way I want it to be, okay? And again, I'm painting all the way to the edge. So if your paper is taped down, to another surface, you're still going to want to work all the way to the edge. Okay. Now I can let this dry and I can always go back and add more to my water if I want to. I can add another layer of color because it's dry. So that's called layering, just, um, and, and we also call that glazing because we're working with a dry surface and then adding another layer of paint on top of a dry surface, which you can do several times when you're painting with watercolors. That's another nice thing to remember about it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this right now. I'm probably just gonna let it be. You could add a few uh, little birds in the sky if you want to. Um, and I would mix up a nice gray. Let's see if I can not make the birds look like, I don't know, something funny. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to, because this is dry, I can anchor my hand. Maybe I should draw them first. Practice on the practice <laughs> Maybe I sheet. Practice first. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So what I'm going to do with these little birds, and they're going to be maybe right around in here, I'm just going to go like, oops, they're very faint little birds. Little shape how about that it's kind of fun you could just have one bird going but I'm going to give make two birds Oops. okay I don't know if you can see those little baby birds they're not really babies they're birds that are flying in the sky but anyway they're probably going to get ready to swoop down and have a bite to eat right they're there watching. you go yeah they're watching I'm hungry. I'm gonna get too dark here. Anyway, okay. So, um, should I do the sky or the excuse me, the water on the other one real quick? What time is it? One fifty-four. Okay, you guys doing okay? Anybody have a question or an idea? Don't forget to unmute. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's another bit of water here on my other one. I'm getting it wet. I'm going to do the same thing and just sweep my brush across to the water. Now, if you're going to do trees, You'd want to wait until the water is dry, the water that you just painted is dry before you add those trees, right? 
That would not be a good situation to do trees on top of the wet wash because it would all run. No, yeah. Have a little bit of a problem. Okay, so that's just a quick little little water. I might put a little bit of pink or if you have alizarin crimson, if you put that in your sky, you could put just a hint of it in the water and I would go really, really soft here. That's an awesome sky. Thank you. Yeah. It just is. a tad. I didn't overdo it, hopefully. Okay, so there's my water for that one. It's really pretty. Details last, right? So perhaps I want this one drier than that one. I'm switching these around because we have some that are in various degrees of, of dry, dryness, I should say. So I'm going to use a little bit of green mixed with, um, this is um, yellow ochre. And I could get some grasses in this. So I'm working over here in this little area that's a little closer to me and I can create, I'm working on a dry surface. So this, this area here is, is dry and I can use my brush to draw some grasses here along the shoreline. And it's to you. So I'm taking my brush and moving it upward to create a little grass. Okay. To show you the trees that you guys see that. So if you want to do trees, you can draw them first and your your painting needs to be dry before you paint the trees and because all these layers are happening here it, and the trees are going to be darker than this area here it'll be just fine you can just paint right over it okay so if you want to do that i would i would draw them first and then go ahead and paint them with a brown or you can mix your primaries together to get a nice brown. If you wanted a warmer brown, then wouldn't you just add a little bit more of a, like the, the red to it? Yes. If you want it cooler, then you know, you can go in with more blue. More the blue. leaves were done on the tree. They were done by dampening first where I want the leaves to go and then building it up with, with color. So starting with light and, and getting darker and darker as I go along. So that's how that one was made. So do you guys want to take turns and sh if you want to and show us what you did? That would be really fun. You don't have to, but it'd be sure fun to see what people made. <laughs> You could unmute. Daniela, you want to show us? Sure. <laughs> oh, Ooh, very how pretty nice. is that? Wow. Very nice. Really a nice job. Nice job. Sorry, I'm only 11. Doing it again. Good job. Only, only 11. 11. What? You're only 11. That's awesome. Good, Good job. job. Anybody else want to show their work? This is mine. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, pretty. I love, oh, love your birds. The birds are really nice. Very nice colors. Well done. Very nice. Oh my. The shoreline is really cool on that one. Miss it's missing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. In the shoreline. That sky yeah. is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Anybody else? Here we go. There's somebody. Okay, hang on a minute so I can find you. I'm not trying to see mine. Yeah, we saw yours. Okay, Judy. Am I there? Hi, Judy. Pretty Judy. Oh, hi here. Anita, go. Nice, nice to see you. There we go. Anita. Oh, Anita. I really like the um, the the way you captured the distance in the background. Very pretty. Nice. And this is mine. Oh, look at those birds. Wow. Cute. Very pretty. They need, they need <laughs> I work. love it. They need to work on I used a little bit of shark to you. outline the birds. That's okay. That's great. Good idea. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it then. I think there was one. Jacques has really okay. nice clouds and a really nice water it's very oh, nice wow. there's one right there okay shark that's lovely is that clock very nice we have to scroll through all of these yeah, to find you taking so. a little yeah. time thanks for being patient with us these are so fun to see you guys thank you so much for joining, joining us today, today. Well, thank you for um, having this class. Yeah, oh, you're thank welcome. You. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have a couple more. Just watch the website and you'll see what else we've got going on. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Okay, All thank right. you very much. Did we get everybody that wanted to show theirs? Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone, for the messages and chat. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, okay. yeah. I guess we could say goodbye. You, goodbye. Did, oh, did you get to read any of those or not? Before? Nope. We keep the, we have a. Oh. Oops, there's Larry. We're upside down. I'm upside down. Bye. <laughs> okay, Larry. And we're going to end. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.